Hi everyone, welcome back to Rheumatology Physio and just want to talk about x-rays today. There's been a bit of back and forth on Twitter, let's call it a back and forth, about x-raying joint pain. And some people are saying that we should x-ray any patient with joint pain. Um, and this was led from a conversation about x-rays for osteoarthritis. So there are a few layers to this. Um, the NICE guidance, for example, says you do not need to x-ray every patient um, to confirm the diagnosis of osteoarthritis. And we will talk about that in a minute. And others are pushing back against this, saying that occasionally when you x-ray a patient, you will find something nasty which you were not expecting. I've talked about this before on Twitter and it had mixed reactions then um, about the NICE guidance for osteoarthritis and using x-rays. And it's included in the book I wrote all about osteoarthritis as well. So it's not like I'm new to this conversation. I'm really trying to keep up with evidence that's released and try to keep learning, make sure I'm doing the best for patients and trying to put out the best evidence-based information that I can. So what does NICE actually say? So the NICE guidance for osteoarthritis says you do not need investigations if your patient is over the age of 45, has activity related pain and has joint stiffness or no joint stiffness, but joint stiffness that lasts under 30 minutes. You can then diagnose osteoarthritis without imaging or x-rays or investigations. So what does that actually mean? It doesn't mean we never x-ray for osteoarthritis. It also doesn't mean we can't x-ray for other potential differential diagnoses that we think might be going on. So we're going to start using clinical reasoning at this point. So if your predominant differential diagnosis for the patient in front of you is that they have osteoarthritis and they are over the age of 45, they have activity related pain and their joint stiffness lasts less than 30 minutes in the morning, then you don't need an x-ray to confirm that. That's what the NICE guidance says. If your patient sits outside of any of those categories or there are other clear differential diagnoses that you want to rule out, rule in, investigate, which might require imaging, x-ray, MRI, bloods, whatever, absolutely go ahead and do those. What NICE is saying is if your predominant idea is that it's osteoarthritis, you don't need the x-rays to then go on and confirm that in that patient cohort that we mentioned. That's as narrow as it is. Now, what I think some people are therefore doing is conflating that with that we never need x-rays. And I think that's a mistake as well. And absolutes always um, make me feel a bit uncomfortable. We also need to make distinctions between primary care, secondary care, specialisms, those kinds of different locations. Obviously, people working in orthopaedics are going to x-ray a lot more of their patients because they've already been seen by previous clinicians. They're also going to be seeing different types of patients, potentially. There is some talk about the negatives or positives of x-ray um, and the fact that x-rays are very cheap. They're very low radiation dose and very low risk to the patient. And that, of course, is true. However, we do need to consider the patient's circumstances as well. So let's take me as an example. Let's say I go to the GP today with my knee pain and I say, hello, Mr. GP. And he turns to me and he says, hello, Jack. I don't know why his voice is so deep, but there you go. What have you come to see me today? Um, my uh, knee is hurting. Oh, OK. Uh, let's get an x-ray. Um, so Mr. Deep Voice GP, I really don't know what happened there, uh, sends me for, a, for an x-ray. Great. Cheap um, and isn't going to give me much radiation. However, me, I live 45 minutes from the nearest x-ray machine. So I've got to do a 45 minute drive. I've got to pay to park. Uh, it's going to take quite a lot of time off work for me. That's quite a significant um, logistical challenge for me to get around. I don't have any particular financial challenges comparative to a lot of people. So those kinds of things are not going to factor into me. But other people, they may well struggle taking the time off work. They might not be paid taking um, the fuel, the payment to, to park at the hospital, these are all things that need to be considered. Me personally, I really hope I don't need an x-ray during school holidays because I won't be able to go. So mid-July to early September, completely out for me to be able to get to an x-ray department. So all these things are going to factor in. Imagine if I had to delay my x-ray for six, eight weeks because I can't get there for various reasons. 
Then you've got the worry side of things. As soon as you're going for that imaging, if you've not been reassured and you're thinking, what if that X-ray shows something terrible? What are they looking for? We need to consider that possibility. So over X-raying becomes with its own problems. Obviously X-raying appropriately, and this is what I wanna come on to with clinical reasoning, is absolutely appropriate, safe and cheap. So what do I mean by clinical reasoning? I don't think that, and feel free to disagree with me, I don't think that X-raying 100% of patients with joint pain is clinically reasoned. I think that's the default setting where you just X-ray everybody. If you clinically reason and you think, this condition that they may have because of this reason needs an x-ray or an mri or whatever it is and you refer that's clinical reasoning not this patient has joint pain every patient with joint pain needs an x-ray there's another thing with the clinical reasoning we need to consider these are the changes that we see in asymptomatic patients and we're going to get false positives as well as potentially false negatives and this is going to be completely unhelpful in our reasoning process We've seen this in low back pain ad finitum. It, over investigating low back pain leads to worse outcomes. Why would it be different in the knee or any other joint um, for osteoarthritis as an example? So I do think we need to be judicious with our uh, imaging use. Maybe I don't image enough. That's a perfectly uh, reasonable argument to make. I would counter that with maybe other clinicians image too much. So what is my thoughts on x-raying for osteoarthritis? If I think the diagnos diagnosis is osteoarthritis in the patient in front of me, and they are over the age of 45, they have activity-related joint pain, they have early morning stiffness lasting less than 30 minutes, I don't feel I need an x-ray to confirm that. And I would go along with the nice guidance with that. If my patient is under the age of 45 or any other categories are outside of that, I would then get an x-ray as confirmation of potentially osteoarthritis. The other time I'm going to get x-rays is if I think there's another differential diagnosis that could potentially be causing the symptoms. So the easy one here is trauma. Let's say there was a traumatic onset or an infective onset or, or something like that where the patient doesn't have an insidious onset and there might be something else, especially intraarticular, that's going on to cause some of those symptoms, then I'm going to get imaging as well. So it's only in that narrow, relatively narrow set of circumstances where I'm not going to get imaging. I may not get imaging in other circumstances, depending on other vari variables. I'm going to treat patients as an individual and I'm going to make decisions on an individual basis. So I hope this has been helpful to try and sort out some of this confusion around the NICE guidance and guidance on osteoarthritis and x-rays. Please do get in touch. Any thoughts on x-rays for osteoarthritis really gratefully received. If you're watching on YouTube, you can use the comment function. Otherwise, find me on social media. You type rheumatology physio into pretty much anything and I do come up. Always happy to engage and further this conversation.